Hey folks, Wally DM here, and today we're going to answer the question, is it worth it to buy Morning Kana Presents The Monsters of the Multiverse? We're going to take a look at a few of the pages, we're going to compare it to Volo's Guide to Monsters and Morning Kanan's Tome of Foes, and then I'm going to give you my opinions, some of the things that I like about the book, and some of the things I don't like and probably some of the things I really don't like. But stay tuned, and at the very end, I'm going to share a poll with you, and it's going to show you what the viewers of this channel think of it as well. So I'm excited to take a look at this. Morning Canyon presents The Monsters of the Multiverse. So let's begin our video with one of the positives of the holiday gift set, and that is the texture and the art of these books. The gloss, the glow, these are absolutely amazing. I am definitely proud to own these. These are beautiful and I'm I'm just like treating them with like extra care because I'm just so worried I'm going to scuff them up. And take a look at this Dungeon Master screen. I cannot wait to play an in-person game with this Dungeon Master screen. It is absolutely stunning. Now, as you can see, again, this is the holiday gift set. There's actually a, another holiday gift set that has the regular texture and regular looking books. And this is the alternate art. And it is absolutely gorgeous. But of course, that's going to be one of our few things that I like about these books today. So let's go in and immediately in the front cover, I want to show you something that really disappointed me. So we're going to take a look at these credits and in the credits section you can see this book is a revision of content that originally appeared in the books Volo's Guide to Monsters and Mordekainen's Tome of Foes. It also has re revised options from Princes of the Apocalypse, Eberron, and Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Now where they miss an opportunity was is there's a monster that is in the Tomb of Annihilation called the Sioux Monster and I was super excited about that. I thought I was going to have a Sioux Monster in my brand new book and my disappointment comes that they didn't take the opportunity to print monsters from some of the adventure modules they could have printed monsters from strahd from from dragon Heist, from avernus from tomb of annihilation they could have printed monsters from those and they decided not to it's just volo's guide and morning canons but let's move on and let's take a look at the table of contents so right off the bat you're going to see that we have the races so let's talk about those from a player's perspective or a dm if you're interested in the races and one of the first things that i'm going to point out to you right away as we go right into fantastic fantastic races is going to be the asamar so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab volo's guide to monsters and we're going to compare the asamar and volo's guide to the Asamar in Morning Canons. And as you can see, there's actually two pages with a ton of lore and different items about the Asamar. And you are probably already familiar with this race that they ha we have Fallen Asamar, we have the Protector, and we also have the Scourge. So three different Asamars in here, plus we have a bunch of lore and things of that nature. There's two pages for this. Now this is all condensed down to just one page in Morden Canaan, and they took away the different types of Asamar. But at level three, you can pretty much choose those again by choosing either Necrotic Shroud, Radiant Consumption, or Radiant Soul. But you can see already that we have lost a lot from going from Volo's Guide into the new Morning Canons with regards to races. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with the races. I will mention a few that caught my eye. Uh, one of them is going to be the Genasi. Now the Genasi have a couple of pages here and now each and every one of them have dark vision. Now the Genasi is one of my favorite races to play anyway so uh, I'm pretty happy about that. They have dark vision and then they have all kinds of great abilities to begin with. So uh, Genasi get a little bit of a boost in this book. Now the one that I'm so disappointed in is the Kobold. Now, as you can see here, one of the kobold's main abilities is missing. Can you guess what it is? That's right. Pack Tactics is gone. Now, they also took away their penalty for seeing in the dark, and they renamed a few things, and I'm, I'm just not impressed with the kobold. So, Genasi I like, kobolds, uh, I'm missing Pack Tactics already. And there's just a slew of changes to the races. But in that same breath, I'm also excited to see some of the races from Eberron in here because I am a huge fan of the Shifter. And the Shifter makes an appearance. We've got the 
tabaxi back in there and we have the changeling the changeling is also one of my favorites and we have some nice really cool new artwork for the changeling as well so uh, one of my favorite races and they also printed the fairy and the heron gone which is good because I don't I don't think I bought that book for the uh, witch light that had the heron gone or the fairy in it so I'm glad to see those in there but now if you are a player and you're watching this and you're wanting to know as a player should you get this absolutely not in fact, I think if you want to play one of these redone races in here, if, if you wanted to look at the Asimar or one of the Janasi and use something that is in this book, then I would recommend just doing a, a Google search for it. You're going to find these statistics online somewhere or go watch my friend Eric from Fry Minis. He's got all kinds of videos that are going to take into great detail all of the races from this book. And you should get enough information, but you don't need to spend the money to get this book, even though it has 30 races in it. You don't need to spend the money to get it because you're going to be able to find all the information that you need somewhere else. So if you're a player, I really don't recommend you buying this. But now let's move on to being a dungeon master. As you can see here, we have our table of contents and we just get right to it. We have races and we have a bestiary and that's it. An appendix in the back. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the appendix first because this is one of the pluses of the book. As we have our monster list, we have these stat blocks by creature type, which is very helpful because it also points to one of the negatives that I'll talk about in just a second. And we have stat blocks by challenge rating. And we also have stat blocks by environment. So if I were to run a swamp ad adventure, then we have creatures here that I might be able to place in a swamp. So the appendix is very handy, but now I did just mention that the stat blocks by creature type because they changed something in Morden Canaan. And I'll show you that with the Anasag. So as you can see here, we have the letter A, we're right in the beginning of the book, and we jump right to Anasag. Now in previous monster manuals, this would actually be under H for Hag. Now that's not that big of a deal. There's only a couple of Hags in this book. We have, we have the Anasag and uh, the Bear, Boer, Hag, however you pronounce that, let me know. But in previous monster manuals and things of that nature, we could be able to look under H for Hag, and I'd have a couple of options at my fingertips. Now that's not too big of a deal. Again, there's only two Hags in here, but where this really comes into play is our fiends, our devils and demons. They are listed by their name of whatever devil or demon they are. So take, for instance, the Maw Demon. This is a demon that's going to be under M for Maw. So if I wanted to run a game where I had a bunch of demons and devils and I was looking for different de devils or demons to put in my adventure, then I'm going to have to go back into the appendix and look them up by type. And unfortunately, it's just going to be under type fiend. So all the devils and demons and fiends are all listed here. We can find those, but it was so much more convenient just to be able to go under D for devil, just like with dragons, you can go under D for dragons and you could just flip through and look at the different devils or demons that you might want to put in an adventure. So I'm, I'm not too happy with their new alphabetical system. But now let's take a closer look. Let's go back to the Honest Hag. We were talking about that one. Let's compare it to what you're going to be able to find in Volo's Guide to Monsters. So here we are, we have Morning Canaan on the right and we have Volo on the left. And again, what I was just talking about earlier, we can just go to Hags and Volo's Guide. We have the Anis Hag and we have our other Hag here. And I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this name anymore, but this does look like a fun Hag to run at some point. But that aside, let's take a quick look at the stat blocks. Now, as you can see here, there are some changes to the stat block. Again, Volo's Guide to Monsters is gonna be on the left and the new Monsters of the Multiverse is going to be on the right. So let's Let's just go straight down. First, you're going to see the Anis Hag, and the alignment is now going to say typically chaotic evil as opposed to chaotic evil. No big deal if you're a DM and you want this to be a good hag, then I don't see any problem doing so. Hit points, they have increased in the new book. They are now 90 for the Anis Hag as opposed to 75 in the previous edition. Now the next thing that really caught my eye is damage resistance. As you can see here in Morning Kanan's Monsters of the Multiverse, the Anis Hag has resistance to cold, but in Volo's Guide, the Anis Hag had resistance to cold as well as bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. So now the Anis Hag can be hit with normal weapons. 
The next thing that you can see is Innate Spellcasting and Volo's Guide is not listed under Actions, but in the new spellbook it has the actions which are Multi-Attack, Bite, Claw, Crushing Hug, and then Spellcasting theirs. Now I don't remember the exact reason they did this, but it just goes to show that these spells are cast as an action. Now one of the other things I noticed is on, in the new book we have a Proficiency bonus where we don't have one listed in Volo's Guide. And overall the challenge rating still remains a 6 for 2300 experience points despite the slight increase in hit points in the new one and now they can be damaged by normal weapons now this is the only monster that i have gone through so far to take a look at and i am sure there are plenty of different differences between the previous printings and the new printings now one of the other things that i'm already missing about the monster pages is if we take a look at volo's guide look how everything's broken down we've got tormenting the weak child corrupt and tribe monster. So we have different areas that it's broken down. Very easy to read the lore on this monster. But now if we come over to Morden Canaan and take a look at the monster block here, as you can see, those bold indentations, those H2, H3 header tags, whatever you want to call them, are gone. So now you're just reading with no break. I really like the older style with Volo's Guide where it kind of labels or titles each paragraph when it gives the lore or the ability. And again, as you can see there, that's completely gone in the new book. Now there's one more major difference between Monsters of the Multiverse, Volo's Guide, and Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. And I'd like to go over that with you real quick. So as you can see here, we've already pointed out the table of contents. We have Fantastical Races and we have a Bestiary. Now if we come over here and we take a look at Volo's Guide, we have our index of monster stat blocks, but we also have all of this up here. We have monster lore for beholders, giants, goblinoids, hags, orcs, and we have character races that are now already in the Monsters of the Multiverse. And then we have a few other things, maps of monster layers. Let's take a look at Tome of Foes. We haven't really popped that book open yet. So here is the original Tome of Foes. And let's like take a look at this table of contents. Once again, we have our index of monster stat blocks all right here and laid out for us. But we also have some interesting chapters. We have the blood war between the devils and the demons. We have an entire chapter dedicated to elves, dwarves, gith, and halflings. All oh, fantastic lore. I mean, let's take a look at this. If you wanted to run a campaign or an adventure with the blood war being at the heart of it with devils and demons and stuff like that, then look at all of this information. Look at all of the lore that you can have to add to your world. You're not going to get this in the new Monsters of the Multiverse. This is stuff that you're only going to be able to get if you own the Tome of Foes. And the same with Volo's Guide to Monsters because Volo's Guide to Monsters is one of my favorite with regards to all of the lore that it gives on Hags and Beholders. One of my favorite things about the Beholders chapter is it gives you all of these different ideas about body diameter, skin color, eye stalk shape, shape and size, Beholders bonds, ideals and personality traits, how you can name your Beholder. And there's even an entire section where you can swap out some of the abilities. Instead of Disintegration Ray, perhaps you have Chain Lightning or Eye Bite. Instead of Innervation Ray, perhaps Create Undead or Polymorph. So it gives you all these variant abilities and you can build your own Beholder. So the lore in Tome of Foes and in Volo's Guide to Monsters is going to far outweigh just having a stat block in Monsters of the Multiverse. So let's summarize with some of my opinions of the book. Now with regards to the alternate cover, this is absolutely beautiful. If you are a collector, then this is going to be well worth putting in your collection. And some of the races that are in the book, there's a lot of positives. I like some of the changes. Of course, there's a few that I don't like, but I think overall, a lot of the races will be fun to play and to try out. And of course, the final thing is, is if you don't mind not having the lore, it's nice to have all of those monsters in one book. Now I do have one neutral about the book, and that is the stat blocks. As we looked at the Anis Hag, it didn't really matter to me either way as far as the damage resistance is and the hit point difference and the way things are arranged. I would run either one of them and probably not think twice about it. 
But now as far as the negatives are concerned, there's quite a few. Four that come immediately to mind. I don't like that the paragraphs and the description or the lore of the monsters doesn't have the bold header tag anymore. I really like that in the older books because it kind of broke up the paragraphs as I was reading them. And as previously mentioned, I definitely don't like the new alphabetizing system where they're not alphabetizing some of them like devils and demons and hags by their creature type. I'm also disappointed that all of the lore that was in Volo's Guide and Tome of Foes isn't present in the book. You're going to be missing out if you just buy this one and you don't have the previous two to check out all that great information on Beholders, Hags, Elves, The Blood War, and I could go on and on. But perhaps my biggest disappointment on this book is that this only includes monsters from the Tome of Foes and Volo's Guide. It doesn't include any of the monsters of the multiverse. They could have had monsters from Ravnica, from Theros, from Eberron. They could have brought in creatures and monsters from all of the adventure modules like Tomb of Annihilation and Curse of Strahd and all of those. I mean, you're talking 13, 14, 15 different books. They could have combined all those monsters into one tome and I would have been really happy. As it is, if you want all those monsters, you have to go buy all those books, but this one just has two books in it. I think this is a very big missed opportunity. So is it worth it to buy the Monsters of the Multiverse? I'm going to say a hard no. You get a lot more for your money if you just buy Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes and Volo's Guide to Monsters. You get all that great lore in there. Not only that, but you can pick these up on Amazon for less than $30 a piece. So while I'm fairly down on the book and I wouldn't recommend it, why did I buy it? Well, that's easy enough. I am a collector and I like bright and shiny things. I play Magic the Gathering and anytime I can update my decks with bright and shiny alternate art cards or things of that nature, I'm usually doing so. Plus, I saved a few gift cards from Christmas in anticipation of picking these books up. And now that I have an extra copy of Xanathar's Guide and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, I'm going to take my old two books of Xanathar's and Tasha's and I'm going to pass them down to my brother. He started playing D&D again and, and so now he's got a couple more books for his collection. So let's take a look at this poll that I ran on my website and see what everybody else thinks. As of the time of recording this video, it looks like 39% of you said no, you're not going to buy them, but 34% said yes, they are very much interested in picking up Morning Canaan's Monsters of the Multiverse. I was really surprised it was that close, but it's very good to see. And then 28% are still undecided or ask what I would recommend, and that's why I made this video. So let me know in the comment section below, Monsters of the Multiverse, are you going to pick up the gift set, whether it be the alternate art or the original art, or are you going to wait until May when it comes out as a book by itself? Are you just going to get it on digital like D&D Beyond, or do you have absolutely zero interest in the book at all? Looking forward to your comments. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It would help us out a lot. Thank you very much for watching, and on to the next.